Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. Okay, let's get started working on some projects. The first thing I'm going to work on is going to be these galvanized buckets. Now, I got three of these. Now, I don't know if y'all have been watching, but I've been uploading videos, bonus videos, on Wednesdays. And I've been taking y'all along to shop with me at yard sales, and then I'm also doing some yard sale hauls. I'm going to link those videos down below and also in a pinned comment so y'all can go out and enjoy those. It's yard sale season, so why not bring y'all along and then let y'all see what I got. But I got three of these, and they were a dollar each. I thought they'd be beautiful, spray-painted white, and then I'm going to add some beautiful transfers to them. Transfers are the easiest way to add detail to your projects, and they're not only beautiful on your projects, but they're really easy to use, and they're also, to me, they're a lot of fun. I really enjoy applying transfers because they're so easy. There's not a lot of work involved, so that's what makes it so much fun, and they actually stuck to these galvanized buckets really well. These buckets right here are great for spring and summertime, that, so we can display, you know, some pretty florals or greenery in these, but I just put three different transfers on each of these, and I will try to find these transfers and link these down below for you. The sponsor of today's video is Blue Land, and I want to give them a huge appreciation for sponsoring today's video. If you are not familiar with Blue Land, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. They offer cleaning products that are people-friendly, pet-friendly, and just environmentally friendly. Another great feature of Blue Land is it can be delivered straight to your door. I got this bundle package right here, and it's going to have all the cleaners I'm going to need to clean my home, and also I got some foaming hand soap. Now, I'm about to upgrade my cleaning routine with the essentials. This box right here, I got four of their best-selling products all in one. All you do is get your bottles that they will send to you, and there's no waste here. Once they're empty, you don't throw them away. You just keep reusing them, and you can reorder refills. So this makes their cleaners very cost-effective. They give you a booklet with details and information of how to fill your bottles and make your cleaners. It's so simple. You just fill each bottle with warm water to the symbol they give you on the bottle. You just open up the tablet that is designated for each cleaner, drop it in, and let it dissolve well. I did this with all the cleaners that I got, and the cleaners that I received was a hand soap, a multi-purpose cleaner, bathroom cleaner, and a glass and mirror. Once all the tablets were dissolved, then you can put back on your nozzle or your pump for your bottle. Now you are ready to clean all your surfaces in your home, and also you've got a great foaming hand soap. And once I went through the simple process of mixing my cleaners, I went through my home and gave it a good cleaning. And it was a great feeling to know that I was using products that were planet friendly and also friendly for, my, for myself and my pets. So make sure to go out and check out Blue Land. I'm going to leave a link down below because they are offering all of my viewers 15% off your order if you use my link. 
So make sure to go out and check out Blue Land and check out all their products they have to offer. They have a 100-day money-back guarantee and they offer free shipping for over $45. I recently went to Goodwill, and while I was shopping there, and I always tell y'all this, I always look at the thrift stores for scrap pieces of wood, because a lot of people will do projects, they'll get tired of it, or they won't finish them, and then they donate them. That piece of scrap wood right there was 99 cents, and I won't have to do anything to this side of the wood. So I'm going to take it, just have fun with it. It's a great project piece. It's really, it's just like a two by four. I'm going to remove the price stickers, and then I'm just going to apply some really pretty floral transfers that I have. Now, I'm going to also link these down below. These are a, a spring new release, and these are absolutely beautiful. And this pink right here is absolutely one of my favorites. But I'm going to take one of these. The whole thing will not fit on my wood. So I'm just going to work it the way that, you know, I want to place it on my piece of wood. And when I decide how I want it to go, and I actually ended up putting the leaves at the top, and you can always overlap your transfers. You know how I'm putting it on the top and I'm also overlapping it on the bottom. And you can also do it down the sides. And then that way, just when you set it up on the shelf, you've also got design, you know, on the top and on the sides also. Now I got some brand new mesh stencils. Y'all, I absolutely love these. You get several of these on a sheet and you just cut away the one that you want to use. Now mesh stencils have an adhesive back. So you just want to put it on your project, make sure it is sealed down really well. And then you want to take like a little scraper and I will link this little scraper down below too. And I'm using some ink black chalk paint. Just load up your little scraper and you just want to scrape it across your stencil. And it's as easy as that. Then you just want to peel back your stencil and then you can also take this, use some um, soapy water and you wash your stencils and you can reuse them. Now I'm going to take this one off this sheet, and I absolutely love this one. This is a great mesh stencil to get for spring and summer. I love the little bicycles, and I can't wait to use those. But on this project, I want to add just a little bit of something down here in the corner. So I'm not going to put the whole stencil on it. I'm just going to put part of it coming up out of that little corner, and I'm going to apply it the same way. Just apply your paint to your scraper and just scrape over your stencil, and that's how easy these are to use. Once they dry really well, I want it to look a little bit more worn. I'm just going to sand it with my sanding block. And now we've got a great little shelf sitter or just a, you know, a pretty decor piece that we can set, you know, inside a little crate or a basket. Now I want to give you a really good decorating idea for summer and for the patriotic holidays. We've got Memorial Day coming up and also 4th of July. Get out those old worn out dirty baseballs. You may have some from your husband or your sons. I got these at a thrift store. I got that whole bag and I'm going to be on the lookout for more of these. Put them in a dough bowl. These little baseballs make great little bowl fillers to set out because in the summertime, you know, it's all about the apple pie, the baseballs, and just being patriotic. So I just want to give y'all this little decor decorative idea, put them out with your little flags, and they make great decor pieces. I also got a brand new stamp that is perfect for spring and summer because it's got the queen bee on it. Now I'm going to take the little queen bee and that little part of that garland, and I'm not sure what this is called, but I'm going to put these two down on a piece of burlap. Now this is just a piece of burlap that I got off of a coffee bag. Coffee bags, I get them for like $2 at a store that's local to me, but they're huge. So the whole back of it was plain, so I can do a lot with it and just cut up the burlap. Now I'm just inking down my ink stamp with some black ink, and then I'm just going to go over my stamp. 
Now, I just ink it down really well, and then I'm going to place it on my burlap where, you know, I want it to go, and then I'm going to add my B. Now, anytime you use stamps before, you know, you lay it down, you want to make sure you've got it centered on your project really well, because once you lay it down, you are committed. And just go around and try not to move it around, and just try to get your ink to adhere to your, your you know, your project base. Now, I'm going to take the little B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to put it in the center. And I thought this turned out so cute. And this little project right here, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to use it on once I got it made. I had a couple of ideas. But I went out on my supplies, and I'm going to show you how easy it is just to update something you may already have on hand. Now, once I got him done, I decided what project I wanted to use it on. So I cut out a little piece of cardboard that will fit my project, and I'm going to apply him to that using some hot glue, and I'm flattening down really well, smoothing it down with my brayer. Now, once I've got it on the cardboard and I've got a good background for it, I'm just going to go around, trim off the excess fabric, and now it will fit in my project. Now, this little project piece that I'm going to update is something that I got at Dollar General a few years ago. I've enjoyed it like this, but now I want to do something different to it. And this way, I'm not going to damage my piece. It fits in there snug, and that way, if I want to take it back out eventually and do something else in this little frame, I can. I'm going to add a little scrappy bow in the corner, and now this little piece is done. And this just goes to show you how you can update something that you may already have on hand if you get tired of it. This is an easy project to do where you can update it and make something new. Now I want to show y'all a fun frame project. Y'all know I love to pick up frames when I see them out because you can get them very affordable at thrift stores and yard sales. This one was $1.99. I love the wood color, but I'm going to I'm gonna paint it and I'm going to show you some milk paint in the process of how you can get a crackle finish. But the first thing I wanted to do was prepare my wood. A lot of times wood like that will bleed, so I always spray it down with shellac. Now, I mixed up milk paint, and I used the Sweet Pickens, and this is called Flower Sack Cloth. And then all I did was you do one part water and one part powder. You mix it and apply it in layers. You apply one layer, let it dry, play, do another layer, and let it dry. And always use a blow dryer, and that'll just kind of speed it up. But look at the great crackle finish that I got on the frame. I absolutely love using milk paint, and I love the results you get. So if you're interested in, milk, in this milk paint, I'm going to leave a link to Ruth and Ruby down below. It comes in 54 different colors. And also, the color that I used was not flower sack cloth. It was called flower sack. Now I'm going to take a beautiful piece of decoupage paper, and I'm going to leave a website down below where I get a lot of mine, and they have a great selection. Now I'm going to apply my decoupage paper to the background of this frame. So I'm just marking where I need to cut it, and then I'm just going to go around and cut it down to size. Now once I get it cut down and I get it worked in there, then I'm going to work in sections, and I'm going to apply it to that little background using some liquid patina. My friend Jackie at Ruth and Ruby, she also sells the DIY liquid patina, and it is great. I absolutely love it. It is my my favorite decoupage medium and i just did it in sections i did the bottom first and i worked the top i'll go over it smooth it down really well y'all know i love to use my brayer just roll over it gently and now we've got a beautiful piece and i think this beautiful floral decoupage paper just really added that that detail to our to our crackle frame Now I want to show y'all how easy it is to arrange 
some grocery store roses and these can easily be bought at walmart because that's a lot of times where i go to buy groceries and a lot of times they'll have these beautiful roses at the front of the store and you get a dozen for 9.97 so I bought a couple of dozen. I got some white ones and some really pretty pink ones. And I know Mother's Day is this weekend, so I thought this might be helpful in case you are getting flowers or you're going to give them to someone and how to arrange them and prepare them. First, you just want to clip away the little rubber bands that have them fastened together, and then you want to get that little pack out. You want to prepare your water. The little powder pack is just, you just want to add it to water and let it dissolve. And this is just flower food, and it will help preserve your roses and help them last longer. Now you want to trim away all the leaves except the ones that may be up around the petals. You can leave those. So that's what I did. I went through the whole dozen roses and I went around and I clipped off all the bottom leaves. Now you want, can use pruning shears. I'm just using a pair of scissors. Now once you get all the leaves trimmed off, now you want to start adding them into a bouquet. You just want to gather them up and then you want to cut your ends at an angle. Now you can go ahead and trim on the size that you're going to need if you know what kind of container you're going to put them in and how tall you want them. Now you can put them in any kind of container that you want. You can put them in a glass vase. You can put them in a mason jar. I decided to go with two white pitchers that I had. You want to arrange them. Make sure there's no holes. Make sure you've got your bouquet full. And if you've got any loose petals, just tear those off. Now once you get your bouquet shaped the way you want it, I'm just going to take a ponytail holder. And you just want to go to the from the bottom and you just want to wrap it around and secure it. You want to work it up on your stems, and this is going to hold your bouquet in place. Now, once you get it to where you want it, you just kind of want to go, make sure you shape it up really good, and then you want to go around, and we're going to wrap that little ponytail holder with some twine. You know, you can wrap it with some ribbon if you want to, just whatever you have on hand, and then you just kind of want to go around until you can't see the holder anymore, and then just tie that in a knot. And then if you've got a, you're, if you're going to put the, this in a glass vase, that way this will be really pretty and you won't see that little, ho that little ponytail holder. Now we've got a beautiful bouquet. Now just go in and trim down your ends as much as you need to to get them to fit in your container like you want them. Now here's the white pictures. These are a couple of thrifted pictures that I have picked up and I thought these were beautiful and I thought they went well together. Before I end the video, I want to tell y'all some exciting news. I now have a booth at my friend Stevens at Stevens Unique Antiques in Rogersville, Alabama. So if you're local, make sure to stop by Stevens and check out his store. He's got a lot of great vendors and a lot of great, you know, different kinds of items. My booth is in a, is a work in process, but so far this is what I have. So y'all are now able to purchase a lot of the things that I make or things that I find out at thrift stores that I think, you know, y'all may be interested in. Vintage items, DIY projects, you name it and I'm going to have it. And I also wanted to let y'all know I'm going to leave all of Stephen's information down below. Make sure to contact him if you see something that you are interested in. I will be doing some videos and some lives from the booth showing y'all more of the products up close. But make sure to check out Stephen's store. He will ship. He's very helpful. So if you see something that catches your eye, get in contact with him and he'll be happy to help you. And I also want to give another huge thank you to Blue Lamb for sponsoring today's video. And make sure to go out, check out their website, and use my 15% off link for their wonderful products. 
And also, I'm still trying to get the word out that I have a new channel, Teresa Green. Make sure to go over, subscribe to it. There is videos out there weekly on how we are doing on the condo remodel. So make sure you're subscribed to that channel. And also make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Like and share with your friends. As always, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, y'all.